Hi, so this is going to be the first tutorial using our new kit, the first kit which the theme is steampunk patina. So we're going to be using a few elements today. So I'm going to first of all fussy cut this sheet from the kit which is called steampunk elements. So I'm going to cut some of these elements out. And I'm also going to do the same with this sheet, which is called Timekeeper. So I'm going to fussy cut some of these out. And what I'm going to be doing is using the canvas board that's in the kit. And we're going to be building a 3D canvas, which could then be mounted on its own, framed. Um, you could punch holes and hang that, you could use this on a box, uh, there's lots of different ways you could use that. So from the kit I'm going to be also using the stencil, this is the steampunk man. I'm going to be using the uh, tool there. We're going to be using the four paints. And then there's other elements I may use as I go along from the kit, um, which may be some of the gems, the beads, and possibly some of the metal elements. So we'll, we'll sort of see how it comes along as we go as to which of those we use. Um, some additional items that I have pulled for you making the base layer I'm going to be using some tissue paper it doesn't really matter what colour it is as we're going to be adding the paint a lighter colour would be better though although I say it doesn't really matter I pulled out some selections of fabric these were kindly donated to me by my auntie um, so some different textures and colours there and we may use some of the add-on items this is the Distress Crayon Antique Bronze and we might use some of the Nuevo, Nuvo Rock Crystals and this is Copper Penny so these are available to buy separate to the kit on the website and they coordinate with the kit. So I'm going to go away and fussy cut some of these elements and then I will come back. Bye! Okay so I've fussy cut a few of the elements. I've decided to keep the backgrounds around the cogs as I thought that will add a bit more colour. So I've cut out a few different bits and we will use these later on. We also cut a bit of the background paper, so that's nice too. So we'll put those to one side for the moment and what we're going to concentrate on first is the canvas itself. So I showed you this tissue paper, what we're going to do, I've got some soft matte gel, you can use any gel you like or if you prefer a light sort of glue of some kind so this is quite a thin wet medium so it's great for creating backgrounds um, in journals on paper or as we're going to do canvas so I've scrunched the uh, tissue up nice so it's got a good texture and what I'm going to do is apply some gel to the canvas. Now, if you wanted to paint on this canvas, the one that you've been supplied is pre-gessoed. So you wouldn't need to gesso that. Um, just so you know. <laughs> so I'm just applying some gel directly to the canvas using the tool that's in your kit. Um, it doesn't matter what you've got in there. Obviously, a wider one is useful 
for big backgrounds, smaller ones for more intricate. So I was just given a good layer there. Just to start us off. And then I'm going to take some of the tissue paper that I'm just going to tear a few strips up. And then I'm going to roughly apply this. So, and as I'm going, I'm going to further scrunch this up so we get a really nice texture. And then just seal that down with some more of the gel. So I'm going to carry on with this and I'll come back once it's finished. And then we're going to work on some paint and stenciling on top of this. Okay, so... We have finished drying, so I just used a heat gun to heat set the gel. So you can see we've got this great texture now. So the four paints, I'm going to leave the gold um, because we're going to use that with the stencil shortly. So we're going to be using the Sea Mist, Cayman Blue and asphaltum so let's just pop these open and what i'm going to be doing is using a paintbrush and some water we're going to color this tissue paper that we've just used uh dried rather <clears throat> And we're going to use the water so that we get different depths of colour. And I'm going to be careful to clean the paintbrush each time so that we don't make the water all dirty. So I'll go ahead with the lightest colour first. So this is the Sea Mist. So I'm just going to pop a bit on my paintbrush. <clears throat> So I'm going to just, just apply roughly and then add some water to get that moving around. So we're just going to repeat this for the three colours and build up this background. So I'll go away and finish that and we'll come back and show you how that's progressed. Okay, so I've just paused halfway through doing the background to show you what the technique that is that I'm using here. So this is the first layer. So what I'm basically doing is grabbing some paint on the paintbrush, adding little blobs of paint, as such, and then I'm getting lots of water and then manipulating this around and you can mix some colours but um, just be careful obviously we've got brown here so we don't want to mix this too much else we're going to end up with a big brown blobby mess everywhere and lose those nice colours so every so often just stop and give that a dry and then go back in. <laughs> and we're just going to keep building this up and up until we've covered the whole of the background. So I'll go and finish this and come back. Okay, so it's dry now. So we can see how just using paint we can create a really nice patina effect. You can see all the texture. Now, I would normally add the gold to this as well, layering up on the top layer to highlight bits, but this time... I'm going to use the gold as the stenciling colour, so I didn't want the 
um, the stencil to sort of disappear into the background. So I'm not going to do that on this occasion. So this is the stencil from the pack. Now I'm going to use the clock and man part here. So um, when you're doing this, you can use a bit of washi tape or um, masking tape to hold your stencil in place while you do it because normally I don't worry too much but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the stenciling then I'm actually going to go back put the stencil back over I'm going to go in with the gold paint so on this occasion I am going to stick this down because the second time I obviously want it to match line up where I went the first time so it's quite important that I'm a bit more exact on this occasion so first of all we need to do the stenciling so I have got some prima modeling paste here if you have something that's your preference that's absolutely fine go ahead with that you could use a gel here if you wanted to mix the gel with some paint so that it's more see-through and this background might show through a little bit that's another option but I'm going to use um, an opaque material this time so I'm just gonna stencil this so I'm just holding it down And I always think of like your buttering bread, that's the technique I use. This is quite a thin stencil, so it's going to create quite a thin layering. You can get different, they call it the miler, the, the stuff that it's cut from you can get different densities so it will produce different thicknesses of stenciling so I'm just making sure I've got in everywhere Trying to be careful not to lift it completely off. So the stencil's really handy because it has different sections, so you don't have to use it all in one go. You can just use the part that you want to use. Okay, so I'm quite happy that I've covered everywhere now just pop that to one side a moment and I'm going to carefully lift this off I'm going to leave the tape on so I'm going to come back in with that in a moment so I will clean off the stencil I'm going to dry this so I'm quite happy how that's come out and it fills a nice section so we've still got some background here and that's come out quite well. So I'm going to dry this off and then I'm going to come back and go back in with the stencil and go over with gold paint. So I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so the paste is dry. As you can see we've got some nice texture going on there. So we're going to bring the stencil back in and we're going to line it back up where we put it the first time. So this is going to add like a mask now. So we're only going to be adding the paint to the areas where we stenciled so it will protect the rest of the canvas from the paint so I'm just going to add a little bit more tape to the edges here and I should have prepared some tape because I'm now mortified I'm realizing I'm using my Tim Holtz washi tape to hold down the canvas but there we go so 
we'll be careful along this edge here because this is not stuck so we'll hold that bit when we get to there so because I want to be careful I'm going to use a thin paintbrush again I'm going to get the gold paint and this paint is a bit thinner than the other paints and you won't need much so we're just basically brushing this over those bits that we just stenciled and this is a thinner paint as I've said so to get solid colour we might need to go in with a couple of layers here so we'll work the way around so I will carry on and do this and then I'll come back and show you how it looks